Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 111 to 115. So first I'll show you guys the questions so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 111, 112, 113, 114, and 115. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 111, it says a single locus gene controls the color of a cicada. Homozygous dominant C individuals, they appear red, and then homozygous recessive individuals appear blue. Heterozygotes, they display a purple phenotype. If a purple and red cicada are mated, what percentage of the offspring would appear blue? So we're saying that homozygous dominant are red, homozygous recessive are blue, and then heterozygotes, they're purple. If you have a purple, meaning a heterozygote, and a red cicada mating, what percentage of the offspring would appear blue? So before even answering this or trying this with a Punnett square, you should be able to kind of quickly do these things in your head. You see that we have a heterozygote pairing with a homozygous dominant parent. None of their offsprings can be homozygous recessive, and you have to be homozygous recessive to appear blue. So make sure that you can kind of do these Punnett squares and genetics questions quickly in your head, and that can save you a lot of time on the MCAT. So our answer is going to be A, which is 0%. And then we can just do it here. If I put an underline, that's a capital C. Otherwise, this is a lowercase c. And then I have capital C, capital C. So at the top, I have a heterozygote, right? Capital C, lowercase c. At the left, I have the red cicada, which is homozygous dominant. So here, what I get in the first column, they're both red, homozygous dominant. And then in the second column, they're both heterozygotes, meaning they're going to be purple. So I have a one-to-one -one ratio of red to purple offspring, and none of them are blue because none of them can inherit two copies of the recessive allele. In question 112, we're asked which of the following regions of the body, if damaged, would affect the maturation of T cells. The place where T cells mature is the thymus. So this question just requires you to know that. Therefore, C would be the correct answer. So if you know this from the immune system, you can choose C. The other options are incorrect. In question 113, we're asked which of the following is unlike the others. Which one is unlike the others? So this question is a bit strange, but if you kind of use your thinking, you can identify what it is. So we don't always teach these mutations differently from one each other, from each other, but in this case, the answer would be a nonsense mutation. Usually we teach these, you know, with point mutations, but if you think about it, when we're saying we have a point mutation or a deletion mutation or an insertion mutation, you're kind of saying the type of mutation that took place but you're not really saying something about the results from it. Whereas from the nonsense mutation, we're saying the result is there's a stop codon and now, you know, translation is going to stop and the protein, its peptide sequence just stops right there immaturely instead of becoming the entire peptide sequence, which can fold up into the properly functioning protein at the end. But in a point mutation, what happens is, you know, at one point, something was changed in the DNA, and then there are many different ways in which this could have happened. In deletion mutation, same thing. You can have, you know, one go away a nucleotide or one or two go away. Same thing with an insertion, which is the opposite opposite of a deletion mutation. You're saying kind of what happens, but none of them give you the final product or like what actually is a result of that. But a nonsense mutation, it can arise from a point mutation. A point mutation can change something that leads to a nonsense mutation or something can be deleted or inserted that leads to the nonsense mutation. Therefore, it's a little bit different than the others in that it describes a result, whereas the others are kind of like a type of mutation which could, which could occur and lead to a number of results. In question 114, we're asked, which of the following tissues is not derived from the endoderm layer? So three of these are derived from the endoderm germ layer, the rest are not. So for the germ layers, you should know that the endoderm, the inner one, is responsible for most of your internal organs. The mesoderm is responsible for other internal tissues besides the organs like muscle and bone. And the ectoderm is responsible for the outer things like your skin and hair, 
but also your central nervous system, meaning the brain. So A, the liver, yes, it's from the endoderm, which makes most of your internal organs. B as well, but C is ectoderm. The brain is made from the outer germ layer, the ectoderm. And D, the lungs, those are also endoderm. So C is the one which is not endoderm, so it's our correct answer here. In question 115, it says the purpose of the superior, superior vena cava is to what? So the vena cava in general, there's a superior and an inferior. They bring back deoxygenated blood to the heart from the systemic circulatory system. So when it goes to the body from the left ventricle and the aorta, aorta that, that blood is oxygenated, then it becomes deoxygenated, comes back to the heart via the vena cava, and that is collected in the right atrium. There's a superior and an inferior vena cava, and then the superior collects it from the upper parts of the body, whereas the inferior collects it from the inferior parts of the body. Both of them, though, they bring the blood back to the, the right ventricle, sorry, the right atrium, and then it can go into the right ventricle. So option A is saying they collect oxygenated blood, and therefore option A and B are both incorrect. We're talking about vena cava, we're talking about veins, and in this case, they're collecting deoxygenated blood. Option C is saying, well, okay, veins don't always have to collect deoxygenated blood, but in this case, they're veins of the circulatory system, the systemic circulatory system, therefore they do. So C and D, it's going to be one of those. And since it's superior, it collects it from the upper part, whereas D is incorrect because it's saying it collects it from the lower part. So C is our correct answer for question 115. And that's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. In that course, we go through a lot of questions just like this, going through all the different answer options and explaining why each one is correct or incorrect so that you get the right level of thinking for the MCAT. Other than that, make sure to subscribe here to this channel to keep up to date with the videos that we post here.